Well, welcome everybody to QUT Center for Robotics seminar today. Welcome to the IEEE members who are joining both regionally and nationally. I'd like to pay respects to the traditional owners of the land, the Togabu and Yagra people, and I acknowledge their elders and recognize that this is a place of teaching and learning. I have great pleasure introducing my colleague, Dr. Rohit Chandra. We've known each other for about 13 years before. Oh, we started together in a small evolutionary computation research group that fitted into a room smaller than that. By the time we left, it was we couldn't fit into a room this size. So we've been on quite a journey together. Well, it's, since leaving New Zealand has been to University of South Pacific in Fiji, which must be one of the nicer appointments, and then moved to Sydney and been in a number of different departments such as business, geosciences. geosciences, mathematics, and maybe one day computer sciences. And I have great pleasure introducing his talk today from UNSW, and lots of interesting overlap with what we do in machine learning, Bayesian, Monte Carlo work. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Will. It's a pleasure. Hello? Okay. So, um, and this is the application of uh, robot path planning. So, uh, what is Bayesian inference? Um, actually, uh, I did not know much about Bayesian inference before uh, 2017. So, uh, I, I had a, a postdoctoral research fellowship uh, at the University of Sydney when I started. Uh, and uh, they are basically my supervisor, Professor Sally Cripp, who is the research director at Data61 now. She is a researcher in Bayesian inference and a statistician, and she kind of um, motivated me to come into this area. And basically, what is Bayesian inference? Bayesian inference is basically a methodology to estimate parameters in a model, right? And it can be, the model, for example, can be a neural network, it can be some, um, um, other data-driven model, right? So anything, any par unknown parameters, you can use Bayesian inference to estimate. And basically, MCMC methods are sciences, environmental sciences, uh, astronomy, and machine learning. So in ed sciences, uh, I was uh, using uh, from 2017 to 2019, I was applying Bayesian inference for landscape modeling projects and also for reef modeling projects uh, in the School of Geoscience. And basically it's like uh, about uh, there are these landscape evolution models. These are very computational models. And uh, sometimes to run one model can take one hour. So you have to use parallel computing as well. So uh, Another way to implement Bayesian inference is through variational inference. So variational inference is probably more popular than MCMC methods in the deep learning uh, areas. And uh, variational autoencoders is the most popular. If you look at uh, uh, Google Scholar and look at uh, variational autoencoders, you'll find a lot of papers, very highly cited papers. 
but uh, MCMC methods are, uh, from a statistics point of view, are more preferable because variational inference is, they say that it doesn't sample from the exact posterior distribution, whereas MCMC methods give a true posterior distribution or sample a true posterior distribution whereas variational inference uh, works with pseudo posterior. So here's a bit of a background. Uh, so with Bayesian inference, you are dealing with data and there's a, you are dealing with a model and uh, you need to evaluate the model. So in, for example, in evolutionary computation, a way to evaluate uh, the mechanism usually used to evaluate the model is known as a fitness function. Whereas in Bayesian inference, it's a likelihood function. And then basically the Bayes theorem is used to either accept or reject new solutions over time. And over time, basically, you are sampling the distribution. So what does sampling the distribution actually mean? Uh, you, you can think of any optimization problem, or you can just think of a basic gradient descent algorithm, which is training a neural network, right? It's a very basic optimization problem, data-driven optimization problem. And basically in there, uh, you could train, when you are using back propagation to train, um, that is called optimization. But if you use MCMC to train that same neural network, that was called inference. So the why is uh, it called inference? Because, uh, the neural network weights and parameters would be uh, represented as a probability distribution, uh, which we can call the posterior probability distribution. So the, the called the posterior probability distribution. And uh, of course, uh, when when it's saying sampling from a probability distribution, it basically means that. You know, in other words, you can say it's a probabilistic optimization process, okay? But usually the statisticians don't like it when you call Bayesian inference as optimization or you link it too much with optimization. They'll be like, no, it's inference. And actually there's this whole part of the Bayesian inference where when you converge to a solution, that whole process where you, you're likely, uh, where your fitness function, for example, goes down, when you converge towards a solution, the whole process of convergence, that, that process is discarded. And that is not actually part of the posterior distribution. So that is called the burnout period. So you, can, you have a bit of optimization process in Bayesian inference. So uh, uh, Reverend Thomas Bayes is uh, one of the key guys behind the Bayes theorem and basically Bayesian inference, the idea is that um, you use a prior distribution, basically, of an unknown quantity, right? So for, what is a prior distribution? It's basically an expert opinion or expert view about the unknown. So for example, in neural networks, as uh, neural networks experts, we know that the weights should be at least between you know, minus uh, 30 to plus 30 for most trained neural networks, right? So that's like an expert viewpoint, right? So that is, uh, and basically we know that uh, it should be centered around something, right? So centered around zero, let's say. So then you can represent that as a prior distribution centered around zero with, let's say, standard deviation of five to represent that knowledge, right? So over time for each of the neural network weights, basically they are updated over time. They are all updated over time. And basically your prior distribution will be changed into the posterior distribution. I mean, the prior distribution will remain the same, but your posterior distribution over time, you will develop a posterior distribution based on the prior distribution. So where the bias theorem comes is it looks at the likelihood function and if the MCMC sampling process, you uh, propose new parameters, uh, parameters that do not fall within the prior distribution, those, the likelihood of them being accepted becomes low. So over time, basically, if your parameters are not 
uh, in that range, they are not usually accepted in any way. So that's the purpose of the prior distribution. So uh, this is an example, basically how they, so you have a, a prior distribution, you have the likelihood, and uh, then you have the posterior distribution. So over time, over sampling, uh, basically, usually the prior distribution will be um, similar to the posterior distribution. So the, the basic idea is that you update information as you get it based on prior knowledge. So uh, this is an example uh, where we can uh, use a very basic one dimensional or univariate time series prediction problem with the MCMC sampling. And uh, where, we, where we use taken sputum or do some windowing to have a multi-step ahead prediction. So for example, in this case, we have five step ahead prediction. And uh, this is the taken sputum just uh, described in mathematical notion. And the thing is that uh, in here, what we have is uh, the neural network uh, given mathematically, uh, and uh, we have uh, the likelihood. So what is the likelihood? This is an example of a likelihood, which is a Gaussian likelihood. So this is derived where the foundation of this likelihood is based on the Gaussian distribution. And basically, you can see the, this part in here, that's basically the actual minus the predicted. And so this can be seen as a uh, squared error loss, actually, right? So it's kind of proportional to a, to a fitness function. So it's similar to a fitness function, but in a probabilistic manner. So, uh, and the, the priors you need to also, uh, and encode the priors in the MCMC algorithm. Uh, and this is an example of the sampling process over time, how you accept or reject the different solutions. So typically in MCMC sampling, the random walk sampler or random walk proposal distributions have been used. And that's why uh, the uh, uh, neural network, uh, Bayesian neural networks to implement it for hundreds of thousands of millions of weights has been very difficult. So, but uh, the Langevin gradient uh, proposal distribution in the last 10 years is becoming very popular. It's basically utilizing the gradients uh, through back propagation as a way to form, form efficient sampling. So uh, at the end of the day, a simple MC sampler is a simple for loop, which basically, um, traverses uh, the likelihood uh, space, or you could think of it as tra traversing the error function, taking some gradients. So uh, the acceptance and the rejection of uh, new solutions uh, is basically implemented by the Metropolis Hastings condition. Um, I will rush a bit because uh, don't have that much of time. Uh, parallel tempering is a similar, is an MCMC method that has a number of different uh, MCMC replicas running in parallel and they exchange solutions over time. And MCMC, can, you can implement it with parallel computing, but the uh, challenge is to have inter-process communication while it is running. So uh, we basically implemented parallel tempering MCMC. This is how we began our research in 2017 and trained a simple neural network. And uh, you could also use advanced optimizers such as the Adam optimizer, the gradients from Adam optimizer to make it faster or more efficient. But uh, in, uh, you, you cannot, you cannot uh, use it as part of the posterior distribution. It is going to remain in the burning period because uh, mathematically uh, you need to ensure that a detailed balance is, uh, condition is met. And with uh, when you have a proposal distribution that looks at the history back in time, which Adam is looking at, that kind of uh, does not guarantee uh, detailed balance condition. So we are still working on how to incorporate uh, Adam optimizer. So these are some of the initial results that we got in 2019 that motivated our work. 
So we compared the Langevin gradient parallel tempering with SJD and Adam alone, and we found that uh, we get close uh, solutions. Basically, the idea is that uh, of uh, Yeah, so uh, we, we see that we uh, sometimes we even beat the solutions from the literature, but when we are implementing Bayesian neural networks or Bayesian uh, models, the goal is not to have better solutions actually, but goal is to have a solution or accuracy that is a better and certainty quantification because you are using, your model is using uh, probably uh, posterior probability distribution to represent uh, the problem and in that uh, usually you will have solutions or your accuracy will be a bit lower than uh, compared to usual gradient based methods so uh, uncertainty is the key word so uh, and uh, basically in both of them we found that uh, you know uh, Langevin gradient based PT parallel tempering is very promising for pattern classification and time series prediction problems so now, uh, uh, after that work with Arpit Kapoor, who started his PhD with me, and Ishwar Nakula, who is uh, was an intern then, uh, we got this paper published in Applied Soft Computing, where basically we wanted to incorporate. Uh, let's assume that uh, we do not want to use gradients, and we want to basically use uh, evolutionary computation methods to uh, you know merge it with MCMC methods you know so uh, that was the whole motivation of the work and basically this is a standard neural evolution where evolutionary algorithms have a population and they train a neural network or with a fitness function and Bayesian neural evolution by MCMC is when we are using the evolutionary algorithm with its uh, swarm or a population to produce new proposals, basically, right? And those new proposals are either accepted or rejected by the MCMC MC sampler, which then becomes part of the posterior distribution. So uh, that implementation, we had it implemented it in parallel. And uh, it was very difficult to implement it because of parallel computing problems, but finally we, we did manage to do it. And uh, we found that in this implementation, the thing is like the gradients, when we are applying Langevin gradients with MCMC, the gradients take more time computationally when compared to using uh, uh, this, uh, in big problems when compared to using uh, particle uh, based MCMC methods, actually for chess and uh, bank marketing problem, for example. So that's what we found. And we, in some of our problems, we got comparable results when compared to Langevin gradient based MCMC and uh, also SJD and Adam from the literature. So very comparable results. So it's a basically an alternative method where we have, we are using neuroevolution and we are giving a probabilistic twist to neuroevolution. And neuroevolution, by the way, uh, was my PhD was in the area of neuroevolution and recurrent neural networks. So uh, these days I don't do that much of EC, but from time to time it's good to revisit the past. So, um, uh, this provides um, the whole framework. Uh, basically, gives a remedy uh, to uh, uh, to neuroevolution, which does not have robust uncertainty quantification. Quantification, and the reason we did this was to apply this to landscape evolution and other geoscientific models in the future, where we do not have gradients and we need parallel computing. So basically, the code infrastructure is developed. And in the future, when we get funding, we are going to apply it to those problems. Basically, that same uh, Langevin gradient parallel tempering MCMC, we applied it to uh, Bayesian autoencoders, and uh, 
I guess uh, most of you here may know about the basics of autoencoders. If I skip it, but this diagram gives a good overview. It's basically a large deep neural network and uh, with different layers, and it's used for dimensionality reduction. Um, and the same framework we applied for training the autoencoder and use it for different types of uh, benchmark problems. And as you can see in the Medellin data set, we have about a million parameters. So in the Bayesian MCMC literature, when you talk to the statisticians, when you will tell them you are dealing with more than a thousand parameters, it's usually a big deal because they will be like, people know that MCMC methods have a lot of problems as the parameters increase. So uh, we see the Bayesian autoencoder is trying, it goes to the canonical autoencoder uh, for the Swiss roll problem and for the others as well. And uh, basically this is the posterior distribution in the trace plots that we find. And uh, this basically indicates that this is the first time in the probably one of the first approaches in the literature which applied MCMC methods for such a large number of parameters in a deep neural network. But there are problems uh, such as uh, convergence diagnosis is something that we need to really work on due to multimodal posterior distributions. Uh, so, yeah. And then uh, moving on, uh, moving on, we uh, look at uh, evolutionary multitask learning. So one thing that probably will missed after Fiji, I was in Singapore for a year at Nanyang Technological University. Pro Professor Yushun Ong, I was working with him and the team with uh, Abhishek and uh, CK. And basically, I was working in multitask learning. That was what was the main uh, uh, groups. Uh, and they were uh, interested in evolutionary algorithms and combining it. So Abhishek, he, was, uh, he developed this uh, multitask learning for optimization. So I'm like, OK. Since you've done it for optimization, I, I, I like neural networks. Let me try it on neural networks. And then I, since I used coevolutionary methods in my PhD, we developed, developed a series of papers. Uh, but the major motivation of this, when I saw it, was that when we have robots or vehicles and we have, you know, getting inputs from sensors, and over time, if some of the sensors are not working, there's an accident, there's disruption, how do we ensure control of such a robot? So we need basically machine learning models that can withstand to change or adapt changes in the environment. So basically in, in this case, let's say that X2 uh, is broken, right? But during your training, in your training data, you always had X2 data, but in your test, there's no X2, right? So how does your machine learning model deal with it? So that was the major motivation and basically, this is about uh, enforcing modularity in neural networks and uh, with coevolutionary developing different feature groups and with modular training, with coevolutionary multitask learning, we can have some subgroups of knowledge. Basically. And basically, the higher idea can be applied to multi step ahead time series prediction where you have different number of outputs. So, uh, in the previous one, it is dynamic inputs, and you can apply it to dynamic outputs as well, such as uh, multiple step ahead uh, prediction problems. And we basically, in the initial work, see, we, we basically applied that uh, where the dynamic inputs means that we, in these experiments, only 50% of the data was used, then 50% of the features was used in the test, then 75% then 100%. So you can see that over time, you have different feature groups when only 50%, then we have 75% here in this fine classification when it grows to 87 80%, and then it's comparable to neural evolution in that propagation. Sometimes it even beats the standard neural evolution. So this motivated uh, me to work on this further. So Megan Nguyen and his, uh, my PhD student started uh, a year ago. And Ming Nok uh, Tran is an associate professor in the University of Sydney. So this is a collaboration with the University of Sydney. And basically, we are applying the whole MCMC approach to the ideas of coevolutionary multitask learning. So then basically, the thing is like, 
if you have a different number of hidden neurons, dynamic hidden neurons, sometimes then your you will have your the neural network, the total number of weights will change. And or if you have so if if you have only two hidden neurons, let's say that is the if you have a, and it grows and grows. So this is where the reversible jump MCMC comes, where it can cater for different number of hidden neurons. And uh, the same idea can be extended to different number of inputs. So dynamic hidden neurons, dynamic inputs, but we are not looking at dynamic outputs. But these basically can be going back to that robotics problem that I showed you and offer uncertainty quantification as well. So we have, it's more about how robust is your controller. So we apply this to different problems, Oka, Abloni, Shuttle, and we can see that we, we uh, can retain the different groups of knowledge and also have uncertainty quantification. Uh, and uh, basically we have, it has the potential to be applied to dynamic inputs and dynamic hidden neuron settings. This uh, problem is a paper we are going to submit next month in one of the journals. And this could be used for uh, robotics problems. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, we come to Lipanov based robot control and path planning. And this is with the uh, University of the South Pacific uh, Associate Professor Vidya Sharma and Dr. Arunash Prasad, and one of the interns uh, from India, Harsha Bhattala, and this is our main collaboration. And basically, Lipanov based uh, path control. This is a robotic center. Here yeah, we use ordinary differential equation. Basically, if you have a if you have a robot, you need the robot to go to a, a destination, and you have some type of uh, you know obstacle. Then how can how will the robot uh, um, go there by avoiding the obstacle? And uh, that's the major problem. And in this case, basically, you assume that the environment is uh, simulated, and you have uh, you have uh, the inputs coming from different senses. And uh, basically, the goal is um, to update the path of uh, the robot over time. So uh, we have avoidance, uh, obstacle avoidance uh, equations, ob obstacle avoidance and target, and we have the light one of function. Uh, and uh, there's a controller design, which we take the derivatives and basically get updated positions, the X and the Y. And uh, Robert, uh, for example, if there are multiple obstacles, then uh, all those information is taken and we have a good path. So, um, uh, basically, we thought, uh, so I was in Fiji in January and then I met uh, Professor Vivya Sharma and we were like, okay, let's do something. Then he was like saying the problem is that uh, they have this working quite well, but they do not have uncertainty quantification of the path. So what do we want to know? There are some parameters such as uh, um, beta and delta. And uh, these parameters, they basically, Tune in trial experiments. There are some hyperparameters. So what we uh, are doing is using a very simple MCMC sampler in basically estimating those hyperparameters. And as a proof of concept, basically we're just dealing with a very basic uh, uh, situation at the moment. And we develop a likelihood function, Gaussian likelihood function, and we have some kind of a path uncertainty. Uh, Right, and then we have the posterior distribution for those the delta parameter for 500 iterations of MCMC sampling. Uh, when we have two uh, different obstacles, there's a bit of uncertainty we can see here. And uh, I think that it can be combined with Bayesian neural networks or other machine learning models to data for uncertain inputs going back to the robust uh, uncertainty quantification, the reversible jump MCMC multi multitask ideas. So uh, coming to the end now, uh, uh, Bayesian, uh, what we are doing, uh, it's an ongoing project. We are applying uh, convolutional neural networks 
and with convolutional neural networks, you get tens of millions of you know parameters, uh, which becomes very difficult for MCMC sample. But that's why we are just using it for some very simple time series prediction problems. And convolutional neural networks are really good for time series prediction. And I have written, uh, we have done an evaluation paper where we compared with the latest deep learning models where we found that convolutional neural networks are one of the best for time series prediction. It's uh, published last year by OLEXS. And um, recently, we also find that convolutional neural networks are quite good for language modeling as well. So uh, we are uh, doing some work in that area too, because when you talk about convolutional neural networks, people are like, ah, multimedia, computer vision, speech, and so on. But it can be applied to other problems. So uh, we can, as I said already, uh, MCMC for path control. We are ongoing project with my master's students, Monte Carlo for path planning for wheelchair. Uh, in a, in an office uh, environment, uh, and uh, the one the extension of the path uh, obstacle avoidance, we are looking at uh, also a three D environment where we are not where a point is flying or a drone is flying, and then you have multiple obstacles, and uh, we're developing a Bayesian deep learning framework in Python. And, Bring all this software for the last four years together. It's called Pingala, named after an um, ancient Indian mathematician who proposed binary number system. So, uh, right, so uh, people don't know about him, so we thought we give uh, thank you. And so, thank you, everyone, and uh, namaste and dhanyavad. Uh, all the code that I have uh, in the respective paper city machine learning, everything is open source. And uh, if there's anything, uh, the, with, uh, please let me know. And thanks to all the collaborators and uh, people in all my papers. And thanks to all the people who are downloading, citing, and coming to this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Hush. Questions, please. Ah. <laughs> Hi, um, thanks for the talk. I found it very interesting how you, at the, especially in the last part, you put together some Bayesian inference with control systems. You've been talking about uncertainty quantification. For that problem, um, I guess you're referring to the uncertainty in those parameters. And how do you, did you quantify there? How does that influence the feedback mechanism? Yeah, because you get these distributions with quite a spread. Right? Yeah, this is the uncertainty is mostly with the hyperparameters. So it's uncertainty quantification in terms of the hyperparameters, yeah. but it can be extended to uncertainty quantification in terms of inputs as well. And in the hyperparameters, what sort of uncertainty? What is it stochastic? Do you give distributions? Yeah, so they are um, bounds on the. Yeah, basically, yes, there are some bounds on these parameters, uh, beta and uh, delta 1 and delta 2. And basically, these uh, parameters are part of the, um, yeah. And these bounds, they, are they, yeah. Yeah, and these bounds, are they deterministic bounds? Yes. Or do you give bounds on the distributions that are called infinite scope? Well, at the moment, uh, it's, a, it's a deterministic uh, model, you know. It's, yeah. And we're basically converting the, some of those hyperparameters to a probabilistic model by using the MCMC approach. So at the moment, the whole, uh, this Lepinov control, there's no probabilistic. Correct, that's yes. why I'm asking. Yes. Yeah. So we were, we were just trying to represent some of the hyperparameters, such yeah. as these, probabilistically. So that we can project the uncertainty by sampling from a uh, uh, distribution. Wouldn't that then give you then also a probabilistic characteristic of those hyper of those parameters? Yes. Um, which may have an unbounded support due to your prior assumptions. Um, yeah. And then how that would that fit into here? Where all these sort of methods require bounded support? Uh, I mean, the, basically, the priors are uh, kind of uh, constructed from the bounds given by the 
experts basically yeah so that the price as i said earlier they, they ensure that you do not uh, get out of the bound so the price already is but the bound and supporting yes, you yes, stay within yes, that yes yes to some sort of conjugacy or something. yes yes exactly yes yes thanks great question thank you <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so, um, my context of understanding uh, is usually within like a classification pipeline where you're trying to estimate an uncertainty at the end more accurately. Um, so, I in that in that sort of context, I understood when you were doing uh, maybe neural network. But I think you said it, but I missed it. When you were doing uh, Bayesian neural network for auto encoding, what was it you were trying to do? There? What was the what was the aim of the auto encoding? So yeah, so you have the when you are applying. I mean, that's what we, you can get with variational auto encoders as well. Yeah. Basically, so you have a latent vector, right? So instead of a latent vector, you have like a distribution. I mean, a yeah. vector of distributions from which you basically so whatever your compressed data is. Now you have a series of compressed data. You can think of it, or rather than a single point, you have distributions. So Basically, you can always, uh, you know, generate, use Monte Carlo sampling again to generate more data from those distributions. And that could be, I mean, somewhat what, somewhat what GANs doing, you know, it could be a data generation process, which is from a condensed or a smaller dimension. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, no, I think we're good. Otherwise, we have time for one more question before we close. Yeah, I have a, just a quick question. Um, my, um, like, what would the advantage of a probabilistic webinar-based control method for robots be over some of the other classical methods used in robotics, like tension fields and that sort of thing? Say that I'm very new to this area. Actually, right. yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I wouldn't know the, uh, the others, but I can just say from whatever we have, the deterministic model, the probabilistic is always you get whatever you have. It's just an add-on to it, you know. With where you have uncertainty quantification in parts or predictions, and basically that is quite important. Uh, I mean, if we apply it to drones, we have the future where you know drones are going to deliver. Amazon Prime packages or Australian Post packages and flying. What's the uncertainty in those different parts that we are looking at for in uh, search and rescue and all these other things? So basically, that's really important. But uh, at the moment, it's a very infancy, uh, infancy stage because we are looking only at the uncertainty of some of the key hyperparameters, but not in terms of the input data. In this lipenome based control, but that's where we would like to go to, you know, drone based uh, methods or even the path, but where we have, you know, I, 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 somehow we can incorporate the neural network control where there's uh, robustness in uncertainty quantification when you have certain sensors are failing at the, in the journey. What do you do, you know? And uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure this is a big question mark for Tesla and all this. Uh, cars uh, maybe just stop sensor has failed right but what mechanisms should be there to stop you know i mean stuff like that so it's an important thing to look at thank you i'd like to thank my again thank you <laughs>